back at it again and i know yesterday in uh one of those videos that i dropped um i mentioned not speaking about this again until we finally got some news well just so happens that we finally got some news uh as you guys probably have heard kevin mccarthy did eventually become speaker of the house with i believe 216 votes because uh, I want to say Matt Gates and uh, Lauren Bobart uh, just voted present, which kind of like takes them out of the vote. So it lowers the threshold. Um, <clears throat> I believe those two voted um, present. So he became Speaker of the House and uh, there was a little bit of drama that went down before that, though. I, I can't remember if it was how many, how many votes did it take? 16, I think it was 16. And it went into like late in the night, like they didn't they didn't come back to the floor until like ten o'clock at night. I think that they were supposed to come back, uh, which is like what they're actually going to work at ten o'clock at night. I'm shocked. I really I, re I really am shocked to hear that. You know when I was when I was hearing about that they were they were gonna uh, leave and come back at ten. I was like, uh, I feel like most of them, most of them are gonna show back up at ten. But no, they they they, they came back at ten o'clock. I'm shocked. This, this is this is more work than they've ever done in like the past four years. I mean, it's crazy. They've done more work in these past three days than they've done in the past four years. It's it's absolutely amazing. And had even more debates, you know, in the past three days than they've had, you know, over the past probably ten years, really. So I'm assuming Kevin McCarthy made a lot of concessions, which you know I wasn't really a big fan of. You know, I I, I felt like that should have been a given from the start. Um, that shouldn't have even been a debate. Like you're you're supposedly a Republican. We we shouldn't have to force you to give us you know certain things. Um, a, a, allegedly, one of those things that he gave up was the ability to basically kick him out of the speakership spot. And all it takes is one. It used to be, I think, five or something, a majority of people, you know, raising their hands and say, hey, we, we, we don't like what you're doing. You need to get out of here or something like that. Um, but I think he, he he came down on that and uh, I guess some, some other stuff as well. So we shall see. But like I said earlier, there was some drama that went down before that that I want to check out with you guys. And then we're going to get into Kevin McCarthy's speech that he made after he won. Let's jump into this first clip and check it out. A series of extraordinary late night moments to end an extraordinary week. This is the man who would be speaker, heading to confront the man who just blocked him. Kevin McCarthy had thought this. So uh, just to give you some context here, uh, I believe this was the 15th vote. And Matt Gates didn't vote for him. He didn't vote present, which, you know, if, 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 he, if he voted present like they did in the final one, then that lowers the threshold. But he voted for someone, and it wasn't Kevin McCarthy. So it caused Kevin McCarthy to lose, which is why you see Kevin walking up to Matt Gates, who you can't see. He's off camera over here to the left. 14th vote would be his. He thought he could count on the maverick, right controversial there. conservative Matt Gates on the left, gray suit. We so can't he hear what they're saying, but it is angry stuff. It's after 11 p.m. They've been voting for four days, unprecedented for over a century, a government paralyzed. Then look at this from behind another congressman approach. Mike Rogers, check, 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 check this out. Watch this. This this is the part that I wanted you guys to see. Orange tie, Mike Rogers, with a few words of his own for Mr. Gates, then restrained by another. This is today's Republican Party. And on January the 6th, it turns out, the anniversary of an insurrection which was fostered by some of these people. It went on a few yards away. Another. You see that? I don't know. I don't know if the uh, image is clear enough for you guys to see. You might have to zoom in if you're on your phone. But that right there says DT. And we all know who has those initials. DT. Donald Trump. Apparently he called... Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene during this uh, session. The Congresswoman, conspiracy theorist, Marjorie Taylor Greene, controversial even within her own party. She no, has a call. Not. It's Donald Trump, DT to her. He is still pulling the strings or doing his very best to. Bobert, 
His divisive politics enabled this fringe Present. group of ultra-conservatives now disrupting on their own. It's been four days of Kevin McCarthy capitulating to their fringe demands. You could tell she didn't want, she did not want to do it. She did not want to do it. And that, I think that's why Matt Gates and Lauren voted present. Because they didn't, they didn't want to say Kevin. They didn't. And I don't blame them, you know. Um, as I've spoken about before, if you lose, you don't then get the, a promotion. You don't get a promotion after you lose. Like, granted, technically, yes, we won in the midterms. But that should have been a red wave, the likes of which we had never seen in our lifetime. So it, it's kind of a loss. You know what I mean? Like, technically it's not, but let's be real. That was basically a loss. Um, so, hey, listen, I, I, I support Lauren. I support Matt Gates, And, uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how this turns out. They get to call the shots because the Republican majority is so tiny. It looked like it was all over for McCarthy, for the week at least, but then the man who had voted no moments earlier had suddenly changed his mind. For what purpose does the gentleman from Minnesota rise? Madam Clerk, I rise to say, wow. <laughs> Deal's done. Democratic compromise or desperate infighting, which will put McCarthy as speaker in a straitjacket, unable to govern to lead this place. And so there was another vote, and this time he got it. Of which the Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of California has received 216. Kevin McCarthy, the 55th Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. So we'll end that there. But, you know, Mike Rogers coming up to Matt Gates as if he was about to, like, really do something is just absolutely astonishing to me. You know, like, you're, you're angry at Matt Gates for standing up for what I saw as most voters. I even put out a poll on Twitter. If you're not following, if you're not following me on Twitter, Twitter, goodness gracious, I can't talk. Highly encourage you to do so. That link is down below. But I put out a poll on Twitter and... Kevin McCarthy received 4% of the vote. Four. Four. The next on that list, I think, was Byron Donalds. He got like 17% of the vote. Uh, third or, or, or second, I should say, uh, was um, uh, Jim, or, yeah, Jim Jordan. He received like 30% and then 50% was someone else. So most of you guys and whoever else voted on Twitter, because I can't see like individual people that voted, but most of you guys voted for somebody else. Only 4% voted for Kevin. Four. So why should we be mad at Matt Gates? He was standing up for what I assume most people wanted, except for everybody in that chamber. And listen, I don't know about y'all, but, uh, <laughs> and some of y'all might have seen this movie before. You can comment below if you've seen this movie. <laughs> but uh, I'm from the Wisha N-Word Woods, okay? <laughs> if, if you know what I'm talking about, he says I'm from the Wisha nigga Woods. But I'm from the Wisha person Woods. Meaning like, I, I, I wish a person would try me. Like, F around to find out. Like, bro, if I'm sitting there, you coming to me like that, bro. Like, I mean, if you want it. He asked for it. I'm sorry, but you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't, don't walk up like you're about to do something. Like, come on. Like, really? Really? Really, Mike? Really, Mike? Stop it. Stop it. It's, it's cool to have a conversation. I 100% agree with that. But, like, to come up and, and do what Mike Rogers did was just absolutely despicable. But let's check out a piece of uh, Kevin McCarthy's speech that he gave after he won. Let's, let's dive into it. It is now my solemn responsibility to hand over the people's gavel to a son of Bakersfield, a former small business owner, a proud product of a firefighter's household, the gentleman from the great state of California and the next speaker of the 118th Congress 
Kevin McCarthy. That was easy, huh? I never thought we'd get up here. Thank you, Minority Leader Jeffries. Hakeem, I've got to warn you. Two years ago, I got 100% of the vote from my conference. There's somebody else I want to thank. The gentle lady who served as our presiding officer this week, our clerk, Cheryl Johnson. Thank you. She did do a great job. You know, my father always told me, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And now we need to finish strong for the American people. You know, if a son of a fireman and a grandchild of immigrants can rise to the highest position in the most important legislative body in our country, and if my colleague, Hakeem Jeffries, with his life story, can rise to lead his party, then opportunity and democracy still thrive in America. To Leader Jeffries, there will be times we agree, and many times we will differ. I promise our debates will be passionate, but they will never be personal. That's my commitment to you. <laughs> and now, like, I'm not the making hard that work begins. To you, though. <clears throat> what do we do here today? Next week, next month, next year, we'll set the tone for everything that follows. Tonight, I want to talk directly to the American people. As Speaker of the House, my ultimate responsibility is not to my party, my conference, or even our Congress. My responsibility, our responsibility, is to our country. Two months ago, you voted for a new direction for our country. Uh -huh. You embraced our commitment to America. And now we're going to keep our commitment to you. It's a commitment for an economy that's strong, where you could fill up your tank of gas and feed your family, where paychecks grow and not shrink. It's a commitment for a nation that's safe, where communities are protected, law enforcement is respected. I mean, that all sounds good, but how are you going to do that? And criminals are prosecuted. I need to know a plan.
a commitment for the future that's built on freedom, where children come first and are taught to dream big. Because in America, dreams can still come true. A commitment for a government that is held accountable, where Americans get the answers they want, need, and deserve. Our system is built on checks and balances. It's time for us to be a check and provide some balance to the President's policies. All right, so we're, we're going to end that there. But, I mean, that, that speech go, goes on for like another 20 minutes. Um, but you got the gist of what he was saying there. You, you heard what he was saying there. Uh, I mean, like I said, it, it sounded good. It really did. It sounded fantastic. But like I said, I need to know a plan. And we'll see if he actually executes that plan. <clears throat> and not only that, I want to know how did he get those 20 to begin to flip for him what did he promise i need to know those things um you know the fact that and i saw i saw the motorcade for uh uncle trump was in washington so trump made a made a visit to the capitol uh yesterday <clears throat> and i'm sure he met with some of these guys and gals and you know talked it out with them I'm almost positive he did, and uh, as you guys probably know, he called uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, as you saw in the in the uh, previous clip, Donald Trump made a phone call right in the middle of it all. So I want to know what he had to say about it as well. What's what was his reasoning for pushing for Kevin? Now, obviously, Trump hasn't been the greatest in picking people to surround himself with. But, I mean, I guess this is this is who we got now. So, we'll see how it goes. I, I, I do have some hope. Because of that those 20 that did hold out for so long, I do have a good feeling that they, they were able to make some good conversations. And um, if, if he gets out of line, I do believe that they'll be able to, to actually do something about it instead of just kind of sitting on their hands. Um, but only time will tell. We shall see. How do you guys feel about it? Like it? Love it? Hate it? Disgust it? Let me know in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.